Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Forget a muamua. Forget 16 Psyche. NASA has taken recent measurements of an object in the asteroid belt that we've long known was there. However, it appears to be different than any asteroid we have detected before. Radically different. So much so that if it is some sort of alien artifact, that would make it less bizarre than other explanations. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I am back in Milton Keynes from my journey to Ireland, and I want to thank each and every one of my viewers. A lot of you really generously participated in that fundraiser to try to get a long-defunct radio antenna, one that can be used for interplanetary communications and radio astronomy, a 32-meter dish. There aren't very many of those in the world, and it's in danger of deteriorating completely. Well, you guys made your voices heard. At the end of the five hours that I spent on the air, we had 2,000 euros. As of the time of this recording, we now have over 8 thousand euros. I want to thank all of you for making all of this happen. I'll tell you, the folks out at the National Space Center are absolutely delighted, and uh, we're looking forward to some more support, hopefully, from others in the future, those who may not have been aware of the project. Um, just go ahead and check the description. I will be linking that fundraiser for a considerable amount of time. And in addition, I would like to thank Brady Bowles who not only contributed generously to the project, he also became a Patreon supporter of this channel. And actually, quite a number of you decided to reach out with Super Chats, even some PayPal contributions. Really, really appreciate all of your support because it is your support that allows me to do things like this. And in order to be able to do these sorts of things, your support makes a big difference, not only obviously to charitable sorts of events, but also also, in terms of my other travel that I intend to carry out here in the near future in covering space flight, not only in Europe, but also back home in North America. So thank you very much for that. Oh, and one other thing to mention, my journey back was anything but enjoyable. Um, <laughs> my hosts back in Ireland know a little bit about what I'm talking about, but really things got even worse on the way back, and I'm not going to detail that here. We're going to talk about that in a separate video called Angry's Bogus Journey. So I hope you guys tune in for that. Let's get on to the topic at hand. Recently, we launched a probe to the mysterious asteroid of 16 Psyche. We know that this is most probably a metallic asteroid, that it has enormous metallic resources, which could be incredibly valuable to our resource-strapped civilization in the future. It could be enormously valuable just in terms of the revenue that it could pull in for anybody who wants to try to exploit it. However, there's another asteroid that's far more mysterious. We don't even know what it's composed of. So when you looked at the thumbnail on this video and I was talking about an alien or UFO base in the asteroid belt, well, that would actually be the less bizarre explanation for this thing. Yeah, I'll say that again, the less bizarre explanation. Because this asteroid appears to be comprised of elements that are not even on the periodic table table the most dense object that we have ever detected in the solar system by far and if an alien civilization or some other force didn't build this thing on purpose then how did it come into existence the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is a poorly explored area, and that's putting it lightly. The belt is estimated to contain between 1.1 and 1.9 million asteroids larger than one kilometer in diameter and millions of smaller ones. If an alien civilization wanted to put something like a Van Neumann probe into our solar system and hide it, well, this would be an ideal place to put it. By the way, for those of you who 
don't know what a Van Neumann probe is, well, it's the creation of Hungarian-American mathematician and physicist John von Neumann, and he theorized that given the overall age of the galaxy, a civilization could send out self-replicating probes, that is to say, probes that utilize materials commonly found in just about any solar system in order to make duplicates of themselves and then distribute these probes across the galaxy until every single solar system was explored. The process would take about 10 million years, but that's a pathetically small period of time compared to the overall age of the galaxy. So what if an alien civilization had put one of these probes into our solar system? Would we have any idea that it was there? Well, the easy answer to that is no. Unless it started broadcasting or something, we would have no idea that something was hiding in the asteroid belt, or indeed, if it was even hiding somewhere relatively close to our own planet. The legendary monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey and also from 2010, the year we make contact, was a Van Neumann probe. However, the object that we've observed in the asteroid belt doesn't seem to be a von Neumann probe, or at least it doesn't appear to be a kind of object that would have that sort of functionality. The object we're talking about, by the way, is 33 Polyhymnia. The strangest object we may have ever found in the solar system if the measurements that we have taken of it prove to be correct. Now, it is not a very large object. We're talking about 55 kilometers in diameter by 54 kilometers, so fairly spherical. In other words, nothing like the asteroid that you're looking at right now. Once again, we don't know a great deal about its shape or its appearance because we've only observed it on radar. We really can't get a good look at it otherwise. Now, the orbit of this object is also very, very strange. Most asteroids in the asteroid belt have fairly circular or elliptical orbits. This one is highly irregular indeed. In fact, there are times that this asteroid passes within 0.894 astronomical units from Earth, much, much closer than many main belt asteroids come to our planet. But here's the weirdest thing about this object. Based on the gravitational influence that it has on nearby bodies, this thing weighs an insane amount considering its size. Once again, a little over 54 kilometers in diameter. However, the estimated mass is over 6,000 trillion metric tons. Now, if we take the average density of something that small that weighs that much, and we come up with some insane measurements, we're talking about 75 grams per cubic centimeter. By way of comparison, lead weighs approximately 11 grams per cubic centimeter. If you were to have a baseball comprised of the material that 33 polyhymnia seems to be made out of, it would weigh more than a two-year-old child. Now, full disclosure, the easiest explanation for all of these bizarre things about this asteroid, and the researchers who made these measurements admit this themselves, that the readings may simply be wrong. However, just how wrong are they supposed to be? Because the densest object on our own planet, an element called osmium, is 22.59 grams per cubic centimeter, less than one third of what this asteroid appears to be made out of. Exactly how far off were we with our measurements? And if we were that far off, do we have to remeasure the densities and weights of every other asteroid we've detected? Well, recently, a team of physicists from the University of Arizona decided that instead of taking the attitude of If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. They would instead explore the possibility of elements existing that were heavier than osmium. Now, in theory, something with that many protons in its nucleus should be so unstable that it couldn't exist. However, they explored the possible stability of really dense elements and came up with what's called an island of nuclear stability at about the 164 proton level. So at that level, it would have 
a density of somewhere between 36 and 68.4 grams per cubic centimeter, a range that approaches the expected value for the asteroid Polyhymnia. As their model used the charge distribution in the atomic nucleus as one of its inputs, it could be extended to simulate still more exotic substances, including alpha matter, a condensate composed entirely of isolated helium nuclei or alpha particles. The idea that some asteroids may be composed of materials unknown on Earth is motivating for space miners, one would think, that would be looking to exploit the precious metals. You've heard of the element unobtainium? Well, interestingly enough, Jan Rafelski, I think I pronounced that right, who headed up the team from University of Arizona, also used those terms. Even if we were off by 50% with our measurements of this particular object, it still suggests that it is made up at least in part of elements that do not exist on our periodic table of elements. Elements that would certainly be incredibly valuable to future asteroid miners. Elements that could be incredibly useful to the development of future technologies that are completely beyond our capabilities right now. Now, of course, all of this still begs the question. How could something like this have formed in our solar system? It defies everything we know or that we think we know about solar system formation. We're talking about elements far more dense than the ones that theoretically existed in the fledgling solar system when it was forming. How could such enormous pressure have existed on this object in order for it to have naturally formed these types of elements? Well, perhaps because it didn't come from the solar system in the first place. We know that dwarf stars, for example, or white dwarfs, are made up of extremely dense substances, as are neutron stars, and they tend to experience some violent events. What if a piece of a dwarf star or a piece of a neutron star were to find itself in our solar system by chance, perhaps thrown off by some sort of cataclysmic explosion or collision in the past? Or Another possibility, what if an extraterrestrial civilization decided to construct a base or a ship of some kind using this type of material as an alloy, <laughs> a science fiction element known as dwarf star alloy? Well, of course, something like that would be incredibly useful if you needed to pass somewhere close to a black hole or to some other object emitting huge amounts of radiation. Now, once again, it's all too easy to dismiss this object as being the result of very bad observations or calculations. However, it's also worth noting that there are other objects in the asteroid belt which also seem to demonstrate extremely high amounts of mass. Not the same level as this one, not even close, but still so massive as to suggest that they are made out of elements that do not exist on the periodic table. Indeed, it may be that there are quite a number of asteroids like this, some of them much smaller than 33 Polyhymna, that are lurking out there waiting to be discovered by intrepid asteroid miners, and even more interestingly, in other solar systems that formed under different conditions, we might find even more unique elements that could prove to be insanely valuable. Perhaps the future predicted in the movie Avatar is not so strange after all. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please check the description for various ways to support this content, and as always, stay angry about space.